All right, so I've been learning. I'm gonna play a song. This is a song I did just actually a few minutes ago. A sample from the radio. That's with this vocal uh, sample, which actually has more than vocals there, but did some um, did some filtering and different things with it. And then I added in a bass. And you see, I got perks, hats, snare. I always name my stuff. Something I learned as a limitation that I didn't know is when naming tracks, you only have seven characters. So I don't think that's terrible. But because you have all this space up here, I can't deny I wouldn't mind having a little bit more. Maybe there's a reason why they only allow you to have seven characters. I guess they figure you're most of the time you're just going to name stuff a kick, snare, hat, perk, something like that or bass, which only takes a few, or even if you put keys or chords, you'd have enough room, which is true. And that's probably most of the time what I would do, being that I'm generally gonna only use the eight tracks in there, and then the MIDI tracks. Eh, if I could figure out a way to make the synth sound not so chip tuney, then I probably would use them, but I don't see myself doing that too much. I'm probably gonna use this more for sampling and coming up with creative ways to sample in it. Um, and these are stereo tracks. I still wish that you could take a stereo track and make it a mono track when you want it. That would be kind of cool. Like if I want my, cause I generally wouldn't put my kick snares and hats and perks on a stereo track. I would have them on a mono. Even my bass, I would have my bass on a mono track. Now the vocal sample, sure. Or if I record in another synth or something like that, absolutely. Uh, but anyway, it's just it's just something I wouldn't mind having. Um, all right, so a couple of things I learned. This could get kind of congested. You can only see basically four at a time with the way it lays out right here. However, you can hit pattern and note and condense it down to just that. Or you can do two at a time. So you can go pattern instrument and see two. I think let's just try three. Yeah, you can only do two at a time. So, and then if you want it back just the way you had it, just hit pattern and it'll go back. Yeah, and then you can go back like that. So that's kind of cool if you need more space. Like let's say, particularly this would come in handy if you're going to, let's just do this note. If you're going to do like shift mixing here, but then again, let me see something. Now uh, you still get your eight tracks down here anyway, so that really don't matter. Um, so that's kind of a cool feature though. If you need to, if you feel like you need to see more tracks, press that and now you can see at least the eight tracks with the notes or you can do two up to two. So if you just wanna see these two and press those two, now you can see those two. All right, I'm just gonna go back to regular, it's fine with me. As long as when I hit shift, I can mute out stuff. So I'm gonna mute those two and just show you what I kind of started with, with the kick and snare. It's nothing major, it's just simple. Okay. I use the fill for this, for the hats, just to give it some variation so I didn't make the same type of hat all the time. Then I did a perk. With a lot of variation in the volume mostly. And so for the perk, I chopped a sample. Uh, let me see, is it here? Yeah, and then you go find the sample. I think I used that one. Chopped it up into the B slice, which I like a lot. This the B slice in here is really nice. Um, it's super easy to use, and it even alerts you. Go back to that. It even alerts you. Like if you see yellow, that means you're in the you're in the go. If you're, and I think it'll do red if you're not on. If you're, like, uh, what am I trying to say? <laughs> Brains having a moment. Um, Basically, when you're trying to get the sample on the um, zero crossing, it helps you with that. That's all I'm trying to say. Okay, a lot to say nothing. 
All right. Make sure you name your tracks. That's highly important. And it's super easy. You can even name the pattern if you want But um, to do. All right, so let's go back. Where was I playing the song for you? So. So that's the song so far. All right, so on the bass, I just use a sample, so I'm not even gonna worry about showing you that so much there to the top. On the vocal sample, I sampled from the radio. So you can see here, you got line, radio, and then these mics, right? So, and it's low gain, high gain on the mic. So um, on the line, on the radio rather, um, it was pretty simple. I'm not going to do too much because I don't want to get copyright straight, but you just go to it. And once you hear it, just press record when you're ready. Now, you only have so many. I think it's I can't remember the exact time because the book kind of confused me with the, it did like a negative 755, 755 seconds. So I don't know what that means. If that means you can sample only. Yeah, I don't really know what that means, because usually I would just say, OK, if it's 60 seconds, so. Are they saying we could get up to seven minutes of sampling? I don't think so. I don't think it holds that much, to be honest with you. So I don't know that. I would have to look that up. Or if somebody knows, comment in the section below. I'd like to know exactly how many seconds I have. But I never use all the seconds anyway. I'm just using, I'm just taking clips and chopping, right? I'm not doing a lot. I know I did an eight bar in here one time for some chords and it worked fine. So I don't think that's too much of an issue. I think the older version of this had a lot of issues with the sample time because they didn't make it that long. So it was a lot more issues with that. Um, okay, back to the song. So yeah, I chopped up the sample. Let me show you the sample. Is that the sample? Yeah, I called this disastrous pie. That's the sample. There's the chops. I did the B slice on an even chop here for 12 chops i don't know why i chose 12 but i did um and by the way you go here to set your slices and then you're evenly or you can let it auto slice and it'll just pick the transients it thinks um it would be cool if it randomized the chops a little bit like um i know they that in um oh what is it called lord Serato sampler, you can get like find my samples. And so it just randomizes where it places the chops. That would be kind of cool. You can make a wavetable out of one and use it as an instrument. You can do uh, granular with it. The granular is okay. It's got great potential, but one thing it needs to do is be able to like, I don't know if you could put an LFO on it or not, but be able to move it around. So it's not stagnant in just one spot. Cause, um, yeah, you don't. I want to be able to record with different parts of it, but whatever. Because you don't have time to go back in here and change it each time you want to play something if you want to do it live. Otherwise, you'd be sitting there doing one at a time. It'd drive you crazy. So that's something they could fix or they could add to it to enhance it, I should say, more or less. Um, but what this thing specializes in, in, in my opinion, is its sequencing. Period. I think this and the Electron Digitac I've never, I owned the first Digitech for like a day. And because it was brand new, there was nothing out at the time. I didn't keep it because I was like, this is so difficult to understand. It was so contrary to my normal workflow. So I sent it back, of course, like most people would do if you don't know what in the world you're doing with it. Um, so this, I thought I wouldn't like it at all because I'm not really too much into step sequencing. But because they have a lot of randomization in it, and I do like that, and there also is um, other ways to sample and to, to make it work, I actually came to enjoy it more than I thought now than I would. And the fact that you got these pads, you can play into it. So it's pretty quick. It's not 
super complicated at all. Anytime I can play into something, I'm fine with it. I can work with it. If I couldn't play in at all, I probably wouldn't want it. Just because I am I prefer playing, playing music. That's just how I am, personally. All right, back to the song. So, yeah. And I still, you can see, I still got two tracks left. So, I could play a lead or something else. And then, of course, you can always build more patterns. So, you don't have to be, I mean, if you go to song mode, you can have more patterns, obviously, in here. Oh, my stomach is just telling me I need to eat. Oh, man, I probably should go and eat. I will do that in just a second here. Um, so I wanted to show you guys this. And yeah, that's it. Really just did this uh, real quick. I'm going to start. Now, I've been working on just getting the kicks and snares and stuff down. I feel like that's the easier part now of this. It's not as complicated to make a drum pattern in here. I'm trying to figure out a way to get swing on the whole track. That's something I don't know. Uh, and I'm scrolling through just to see there's a spot. But on the master, you do have like, you know, all these these tracks and you can adjust the volumes, which I've done. But I do want there to be like an overall like swing or something that I can put on there. And currently I don't see any of that. So um, if you go to song mode, yeah, there's nothing in there to indicate swing. So I know you can put swing on each individual note or you can add it to you know all the notes in a track. But I would like to have something universally where I'm swinging the notes. That's kind of a thing I wouldn't mind having, but I don't know, maybe they'll add some of this stuff in the future. I hear they do, and this is just from hearsay, so don't quote me on it, that they do probably like one to two updates a year. And I'm okay with that as long as they're good updates, quality updates. Um, but I hope they would do some little fix updates occasionally in between those major updates, just because uh, there are some little quirky things that could be ironed out if they could do those sooner. But the one I really want the most for this thing is the recording in via USB. Now you can rec you can listen to something coming through here, but when you want it via USB, but when you want to record in USB, as you guys seen, and I'll show it to you again if you don't remember it, the sample recorder, you only have the line in, the radio, and then the mic in, right? So it'd be nice if they put the USB in here because I would prefer to record a lot of stuff in via the USB. One of the things they don't have, but there's a good, pretty solid workaround is when you're recording in, you can't play the track. So in other words, you see I press play, it's playing in the background, but you can't even hear it. So I don't know if that's like, I don't know why they let you play it if you can't really play it. But yeah, I can't hear it going, even though it show is playing the pattern. So I'm... Yeah, I'm confused on that one. But it would be nice if they would let you play the pattern so when you're picking a sample, you could kind of listen to that while, you're, um, while your track is going. Especially if you, but if you don't have nothing on it, then it wouldn't matter. But in this case, I do, so it kind of matters. But anyway, and the fact that they have monitor on, didn't mean to do that. They have monitor on and I'm like, for monitor for what? Like, what are we monitoring? Like, if something's coming in, you should be able to automatically monitor that. But maybe they're doing that for a reason that you can turn it off if you need to. So let's turn it off and then switch to line radio. Okay, yeah, so it just turns it off. Like, that, I think that's kind of corny. I don't know what the purpose of that is because if I'm not on the radio, then it's not going to monitor anyway. But maybe they have a reason I'm new. I don't know. I'm just wondering about those things. All right. The other thing I haven't touched on here, just so you know, is um, the performance effects. Because it looks cool. Like, they have all the patterns here. You can change different things. I just don't know what in the world is going on here, if I'm blatantly honest. I have no clue about this. I need to read on this to see what is going on with these performance. I know if you go down, you can see the green moves. But... And I mean, you can record, I guess, Ian. I guess that's when you press that, you're recording in those effects. I don't really know. But anyway, 
I'll look into it, see if I can figure something out here. Uh, that's going to be it for this video. Just kind of update more or less on using this. Um, so far, it's been really good. It's not super complicated. Um, I will say that I feel like it could use an update sooner than later. Um, and there are just some things that could be better. I would like to see if some people, um, let me go back to a pattern. I'm going to go over to a MIDI. If there's anybody out there that knows this too, let me know. Uh, not that. I would like to know. Okay, so you have these three instruments, right, that you can put in here, which they can be changed. I'm going to start with this instrument. I'm going to go to the parameter, okay? So you have these five total in here. And the perk is obviously a drum machine type thing. The rest are the actual synth. So, so did you see that though when I'm, okay. I know they know there's an issue with, um, I think it's when you, in the second parameter page here. With these, like if they're set to zero, then they'll be like, but it's already set to something and I don't get why. And so then let's say I move up. That one works, right? My dog is tweaking because she hears it. But you see how when I first came in, it was like, what in the world was going on? Now it works. You have to move, initialize the patch. That's kind of weird. But anyway, they do have that and you can load there's a there's a ton of presets, none of which I really am fond of, to be honest with you. They're just like they're very they're they're way they're super synthy. If you into that, no disrespect, but this one's okay. I like pads more or less, and a lot of this stuff is um very synthy like that one's alright. I ain't using that. Sound selection is everything in music. But these are very synthy. I could see like if you make techno EDM, a lot of these will work great for that. If you now they do say, I know that I've heard people say, well, you can go in and um so if I confirm that. You can edit the patch and here's where you can get wild. Now see, this is cool because they show you, you have this here. So you can pick whether you're gonna, okay, I'm gonna go to the filter and it's pretty quick, right? And then just start adjusting whatever I'm gonna adjust. Or if I'm gonna go to the amp and adjust the tack, maybe put some more. Some of these sound good. I'm not going to say it's all bad. It's not. It's, there are some good ones. The voice. Um, and then they have the macros. And then the macros, obviously, you can get real crazy. Like, here's your motion. This says experiment. Filter cutoffs. And then these are empty down here. But you see what I mean? Like, you can go in here and really adjust portions of it. And then you can save it. I'm not a huge sound. You guys know in my channel, I'm not. Like if sound design becomes um, easier, sure. And it is pretty, some things are easy. I turn a knob, okay. But this gain is loud. cool if they made a randomizer that could randomly generate patches for you 
Um, just It just tweaks all the stuff at random, and then you come up with some cool. That sounds pretty good, actually not bad at all. Um, but every patch is gonna be a little bit different of what you... I mean, they got a ton of stuff in here. So I guess it's just, if you know what you're doing with this, you could really get some, you could go to town. I guess I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> That's true, I don't. Um, see not everybody's like that person that's gonna do that but let's say if they came out with a random visor in here that would allow you to press it on like let's say you're on this acd patch here and there's a button here i don't know where they put it to be honest with you but um let's see maybe they could put it in somewhere in here where you press a random a certain button combo or whatever that just randomizes the settings and then when you go into it now you they could even put it over here on the macros because there's space now with these two they could have one here where you just hit random and then uh you could just randomize a patch and then start playing and doing your thing but yeah stuff like this use that I, I wouldn't personally use that but anyway all right well that's it for this video kind of an update again i need to go feed my stomach is obviously telling me so um and hopefully everyone is doing well there's a lot of sickness going on i know the covid cases are up again unfortunately and people are getting sick so be careful out there and the heat is insane i don't care where you live i think right now it's just everybody's dealing with heat so be safe and i'm out